I'll just try to give a, an overview and then maybe um, we could just have a group discussion afterwards. Um, so the premise of the paper is there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot, we have, we have uh, the genome of many different organisms mapped today, but there's, there's a, a big leap in understanding between the genome, but between just the static genome and then the functional or the function of that genome. So the, we need to develop some framework for understanding, um, understanding how behavior both at the macro and the micro level emerges from the genome. So this, uh, this paper tries to build, build upon some previous work that has been done to, um, in, in, the, in the area of, of gene expression modeling and to develop, um, to develop two frameworks. One for actu um, a model, proposing a model for gene expression, and then, oh, I don't think I have the slides up. Dick, Dick disappeared too. Okay, so um, so two things here. One is I, I'm actually talking out of order in the slides. I'll just talk. the The second is okay. The first is I'm a, a, a model for gene expression, and the second is um, an algorithm for parameterizing the model given gene expression, uh, giving. Um, Gene expression data, which can be a, which would be obtained with some sort of imaging um, in the organism of interest. So um, there there has been some there has been some previous work, but so uh, one of the things that that is discussed in the paper is um, are these Boolean models where where genes are modeled um, where where genes are either expressed or not expressed. And that was that's a little bit simpler here in this paper. Um, they they try to pre, they try to present a gene expression model um, based on the actual rate of expression of the of, of each gene. Am I am I being clear here? Do you want, I, uh, uh, could you do me a favor? I just uh, I just got back in for some reason. Sure. Uh, just go back uh, to the first slide so I can see it. Sure. The first slide. Okay. Gene expression only with different. Okay. 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 Got it. Okay. And now the second slide, so I can see that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Between understand. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I order. Uh, gene expression. Well, the second maybe. Uh, Generated today. Well, maybe. Okay. Okay. Go. <clears throat> Go ahead. Okay. Um, you are the expert, so just let me know when I say something when I say something wrong, or or, or if you have a if you have no, something to say. No, 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 don't take that into. We're all naive. <laughs> okay. Um. So. So there, the very simple thing, and maybe I should have, and I didn't. I should have looked into all of these. Other models that have these these other works that are that have been quoted. Um, so the first the first is a Boolean model for gene expression, where genes are either on or off. Um, and and then this second paper, um, Liang to, tries to propose a framework for parameterizing this the the, the Boolean network model um, by computing the mutual information between the different gene expression time series, mm -hmm. so you can you can figure out how the how different genes are related by. Um, should I go into mutual information, or? You sent out a paper on that earlier, right? Or posted it somewhere? Yeah, I think. I think so. I looked at that. Yeah. Um, so I mean, delayed mutual information. It had that in it. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I thought I don't know if these other guys did, but so yeah. What, Essential. I could. Uh, I don't. I don't have anything on that. I could just open up the Wikipedia page. What it. What it. Uh, what it tries to do is compute the um, entropy for the joint distribution of the two different of the of of your two time series. Okay. So uh, let me. Uh, where, where, where's the time series here? Okay. So, so we're talking about time series. Um, 
a gene gene concentration over time for okay. for for any number of genes in your organism. And okay. And this is concentration in a single cell in the whole organism? Oh, in a single cell. Okay, and we're ignoring the fact that lots of proteins are not uniformly distributed it, in the cell. Expression concentration, right? Yeah. Um, okay. It's, it, it, it wasn't clear in the paper. They did not, they did not deal with the fact that uh, protein concentrations are not uniform. I'm assuming that they are talking about the overall concentration in the, in, in the cell. Um, so this is... Uh, let me ask a question. I don't, of course, this predates you, but not me. Uh, the binary model, is that initially attributed to Stuart Kaufman? Oh, I don't know. Don't know, okay. Uh, you said, what? Well, what's the name of the person? Yeah, the Boolean model. Uh, I thought... Yeah, yeah, I mean, he did it for his PhD thesis back in the 60s, I think. Okay. Okay. And I think he had the first one. I'm being mean. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Okay, go um, So, so this is, this is how the, I don't, I don't know the details, but I can infer they somehow by computing, um, the mutual information between the two different time series, and I don't know how they exactly the details. There's I know with mutual information, there's some um, a lot of nuance. Depending, you get different results depending on how you on how you bin your data for the probability distribution. So I don't know how they did that, um, and I don't I don't intuitive intuitively I can inf infer how they might have uh, tried to parameterize their the Boolean model. With the mutual information, but I don't I don't know exactly how that was done. Um, but he, so that that was that's another that's an old model, and they try they tried to um, they tried to build on they tried to build something more uh, more exact where you where you can model not uh, not uh, not not Boolean gene expression, but you can actually take into account the rate of expression. And that's what gives this model a little bit more uh, smoothness or nuance. It would have it would have been cool if I had actually tried to simulate something with this model, but I didn't. Okay, so that's the Boolean network, and I'll go back to the slideshow. Um, so the, they're just at the beginning of the paper. They just talk about some other things that have been done. It doesn't. It didn't really seem to me to uh, affect the ideas presented in the paper so much. I think it was just an overview. Um, there's there are some other. They, they talk about some other methods for optimizing uh, this. Um, well, this first of all, a, a logical model, where I guess you have a, a logical model for gene expression, or I guess um, genes. Whether a gene is expressed is some logical function of the genes that uh, the the genes that induce its expression. Did I say that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. A mediator thing, huh? Um, interestingly, a few. A few weeks ago, I saw this paper, which had um, they developed software where you could specify a logical model for 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 gene expression, and then it would it would automatically generate DNA sequences, uh, promoter sequences, so that you can implement that logical model in in real DNA. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. Yes, yes, that was in the synthetic biology literature. Um, hey, hey, Bradley, what is Steve McGrews? He's not here. He's a member of this group also. He had a sort of, he had kind of an abstract model of things, turning things off and turning things out. What was that called? Introns or, no, what was it? Operons. Op, was it called operons? Didn't you
Yeah, sorry, I don't want to diverge, diverge too much, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then and then this last paper um, tried uh, tr tries to uh, build upon this the Michaels met uh, methods for optimizing this logical model. There apparently there are some there are some errors um, in the uh, there's some just noise in the data, and that's what that's what this last paper deals with. So um, the objective so. That, that's that's all the prior work that the, the paper cites, and now I'll just go into this is all in the paper. Um, the objectives that they state for their model, they want the idea is you have you have some you have some prior mathematical model uh, for gene expression in, uh, for any number of genes in the organism, and you should from this data um, derive uh, derive the relationships between uh, how how certain genes affect the expression of other genes. This model should skip to the entire genome level, I, effectively enabling you to uh, simulate do do gene expression modeling for an, for an entire cell. Um, and then the last thing is in, the last thing is important, and they only get to that in the end. Um, take the take the time delay into account because it takes it takes a certain amount of time for mRNA to be transcribed and translated into protein. So that's they don't take that into account in their initial model, but in the very end, um, they 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 add on to the, the, their initial model to deal with, with to deal with that um, little 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 nuance of time delay. So um, I I don't want to go into I don't want to go into all the math because I understand it somewhat, but um, to, to present it would be a, is a little bit too much for me. Um, but if you want, we could go through the we could uh, you could pull up the paper and and maybe discuss it in, in, in as a group exactly uh, the math behind of all of this. Were you expecting me to present the math behind all of this? Okay, um, because most of the paper. Is actually just so. Here's here's the model, and I can explain how this how this how these two differential equations work, and then a lot of the rest of the paper just goes into um, how you solve these uh, the, the so what the solution for this differential equation looks like, and how do you parameterize um, the various parameters for this equation, which is really what the what the algorithm of interest. Which is what the algorithm of interest is to param so to parameterize your model for gene expression. Um, so th there are two equations here, two differential equations. One of them dis one of them um, models uh, mRNA concentration, or or one of them models the the derivative of mRNA concentration, and the other. The other models the the uh, protein concentration. So these all of these this is a I don't know what the the technical term for it, but it's a vector vectorized differential equation. So all of these variables are vectors. Um, so mRNA it, the change in mRNA is going to be um, a f is going to be a function of the concentration. Of tra um, I don't know what the, what is the word for it transcription factors S uh, minus the degradation rate of mRNA so the the existing mRNA will degrade and so you need to take that into account when you're looking when you want to know what the what the change in mRNA concentration is going to be and similarly for the evolution of for the protein concentration trajectories is going to be a function um, a linear function of the uh, current pr concentration of mRNA um, minus because pr proteins pr proteins are translated in a, with the ribosome from mRNA uh, minus the degradation rate of protein. So obviously um, you need to know what f of p is, and I don't so. One of the questions I have for you is why, 
why FFP needed to needed to be undefined here, why why they needed to solve for it, and why they couldn't have just uh, built that into this initial model. Do you have any do you have any ideas? Okay. Can I ask a dumb question? So, mRNA is creating proteins, right? Is that how it works? Yeah, but then, but then they go, then they wander off and create proteins, right? Okay. So why is it? Why is it? I guess why is it function have proteins as an argument instead of mRNA? Oh, because, um, yeah, that's actually a good question. I would think you would think that the the protein that they're talking about is is the concentration of, in, of, of transcription factors, which influences yeah. the rate of transcription. Um, you would think so. You would think so, but it's not. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay. So it's not one size fits all. By any means. Okay. Okay. Um, as just on a side note, I was thinking to 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 understand like how proteins compute things, uh, or how proteins can perform their function. Um, you can think of proteins as like a mechanical neural network where the, where the propagation of information is, uh, is, is really just molecular, intermolecular forces or forces between the amino acids and the state of each neuron is the position of the amino acids in time, a uh, position of amino acids in space. So you can uh, think about proteins as as neural networks, and then using the same techniques you would to understand neural networks, uh, you could you could try to understand protein. Just an idea I had. What what would be the output of that then? The output of that would the output of that would be um, how how proteins respond to input. So how how proteins respond to uh, to. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the the That's idea is. You'd be able to the same way you train neural networks. You'd be able to train your develop custom proteins. That that's just a passing thought that I had a few days ago. Oh, weird. Um, Interesting. So you kind of think of proteins as mechanical neural networks. <laughs> okay, what? because we were just talking about proteins. But anyway, yeah. I'm getting that was getting sidetracked. Um, understanding why. P, why it's F of P and not F of translation, f transcription factor, that's a, we yeah. need to figure well, it out. I was also thinking, like, some proteins are catalysts and enzymes, so they, they, they do things, but that's probably not referring to that, you know. Um, so they, they tried to solve for F of, figure out what F of P is, they, 
they view it as a black box and then try to describe it relative to other things. Um, so in the in the paper, and I I understand the nature of this, but I don't under I don't uh, I haven't really studied um, Taylor Taylor approximations. I haven't I've, I've studied calculus um, in bits and pieces as I've needed it. So I haven't really gotten a formal ex experience with all aspects of calculus. Uh, but so they at, at the end they um, they, they describe the evolution of this system. And S X is is a dual. It's a vector of both the uh, both the rate of both of the concentration of mRNA and protein, and that the evolution of the entire system can be described by this model. And the problem becomes parameterizing those four matrices V, L, C, and U. And they derive that through a whole through a, a whole bunch of math. Um, which we could go into, but it it's it's just very it's very detailed, and I didn't think it was worth uh, I didn't think it was necessary to go and do, and do that in front of everyone. And um, I understand it. I I still a little it's still a little bit difficult to present it. Um, so the yeah, so the problem becomes estimating those four those four variables and they discuss how to do that in the in the paper um, one other thing is that the, the solution to this differential equation um, ends up become becomes this and I don't know how I don't know how that is derived maybe um, you guys know how know how to derive this from that huh What's Q? How so? How Q is what? Oh, 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 I thought you said cute. Um, <laughs> Q, Q is another matrix. And this is just getting into a lot of mathematical detail. So uh, I can pull up, I'll, I'll pull up the paper itself because I don't have, I, I didn't, Okay, so Q is is this. Um, it's it's some um, it's a, just a it's a polynomial. It's an it's a vector. It's a matrix whose elements are polynomial functions of t. Just the solution to that differential equation. Okay. Um, where where you get we get the solution as a, as a, with with the eigenvalues of the of m. Um, okay, this is going. This is this is all of the the detail. They just they talk about how they how you solve you solve this differential equation with given the input given the uh, gene expression time series. Um, and then they then they talk about this other another model that builds upon the, this this model that I was just talking about to model just um, just uh, just mRNA. So they 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 don't you can basically model mRNA concentrations without taking into account protein uh, protein con protein concentrations. So and and the same for protein without mRNA. So, pro as a self, basically protein um, protein models without taking into account mRNA, and that's this over here. And then here they talk about the time delay model, where they solve for the where they take into account that the time delays between uh, for transcription and translation, and that and that that is that is the paper. Was that was that a little bit too uh, quick or too brief? So so if they're if they're looking for eigenvectors, then they're obviously looking for like like dominating kinds of relationships in the yeah. 
in the inputs, right? Yeah. Okay. So M, I should have I should have said um, I don't I don't understand what C is. They don't really define what C is. It's just some some matrix for evolving for uh, some matrix for describing um, the relationship for describing the relationship between the protein concentration and when you when you're starting to look at mRNA mRNA trajectories that's over here that's highlighted um, and I don't I don't understand why they couldn't have just put C up in this model I don't know but these other these other matrices L is a translation is a tra the translation um, the 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 protein translation rate given the mRNA concentration V is the degradation rate of mRNA given the current concentration of mRNA U is the degradation of proteins so you can uh, given the current concentration of protein what is the degradation rate um, and I suppose C is the tr uh, translation transcription rate given the current concentration of proteins and uh, yeah like the eigen the eigenvalues will tell you the most ver the um, ax the the axes of most variation among the genes. Right. So and then I saw the Fourier transform too. So they're looking for like oscillations, right? Um, yeah. So they they talk about um, stable and and non. What is the stability of this gene model uh, or this of this genetic network? And I don't know. I don't know how this result. How how they derive this, but the system is unstable if, if there is a positive eigenvalue um, because this it just it, it goes into chaos. And okay, like a feed forward thing or something, right? Yeah, because the solution be exponential, so you don't really have. Oh, I see. This it is doing. And yeah, and then, um, and then if 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 any of the eigenvalues, um, if if all the real parts of the eigenvalues are non-positive, if they're negative, then you end up you end up getting a semi-stable system which does oscillate, but the oscillations get the amplitude of the oscillations get larger and gets larger and larger. Oh, okay. All right. So they're looking. For, so they're looking first. Uh, what qualifies what what qualifies the system as being stable or yes and the, stuff like that right oh there it is yeah the system is unstable there interesting so I just thought my interest was in uh, I, I've been interested in neuroscience. That's what I'm doing here at Princeton. And I was thinking you could apply the same techniques to understanding genetic networks. And I was I was hoping me, that um, gene expression, gene expression plays a, definitely plays a role in the development of C. elegans. So I'm wondering how do you think this could integrate with DevoWorm? Where does where would it specifically come in? Was this an actual was this a C. elegans gene system? Uh, no, um, that they were looking. At? They didn't really look at this in the context of any particular system. Oh, okay. They just yeah, they just proposed okay. this, this. They just do all this math. Oh, okay. They didn't they didn't really see if this model truly works in biology. Oh, and that, oh might, that would be interesting to see. Yeah, try and. Because that's a that would be a great project is actually see if it uh, if you could plug in the, the the parameters for for some organism and see what you know. Yeah.
Okay. Oh, yeah, I just found, um, I just found, as you were talking, this paper came into mind. It talks about, uh, I, I haven't read it, but I think it might be relevant, genes and development. Just what it is. Oh, the clock and wave front model. Oh, yeah. We we talked about that before here. And uh, Dick is a, uh, you know, uh, expansion waves and, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The, the wave, the wave causing, uh, you know, phenotypic development. Right. <laughs> oh, maybe we should put up a picture that uh, just just the lot eye that we've been looking at with. Uh, okay. Uh. <laughs> The differentiation waves. I don't know. Which cheat watch? I imagine. I imagine a disk. Do I have it here? I, I might not have it on here. Okay, you have it. Um. Could one of you just tell me exactly how, what is the organization uh, of DevoWorm? Like, how, how, <laughs> we're all how, presidents. <laughs> we're all, we're all presidents. Oh no! I just mean like, is it? Is this you guys do this on as a as a hobby? And well, I'm retired, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's sort of a it's sort of a serious hobby for me. I mean, I have a daytime job, but uh, this is what I really like to do. So. I do a lot. I do a lot of uh, other stuff with like uh, machine learning and, and stuff like yeah, that. So I had a daytime job too, but yeah, I always made science my <laughs> yeah. But my, my uh, I got paid for doing my hobby. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's your What's your situation, Akiva? Oh, um, right. So I, get, I was in tenth grade until a few until a month ago. Um, I was a little bit, uh, I was very miserable in 10th grade. Um, 
I, I wasn't really able to learn. I felt felt a little bit stifled, or very yeah. stifled. So, um, I I've been very I've been involved with Open Worm for the past few months, and okay. wanted I wanted to pursue neuroscience um, to the greatest extent. So I, for the last month, I've been at at a neuroscience lab at Rockefeller University, um, and then now I'm at a in the, in, in the lab at Princeton. Um, at the Murthy, Murthy lab, they're doing uh, fruit fly courtship, courtship behavior with fruit flies and uh, Drosophila. So that's where I am right now. Um, yeah, so that's my you're story. Going back to eleventh grade, or you're just skipping high school? I'm going into I'm going to the the visiting students program at Columbia next year. Visiting students. Yeah. So where, where do you where do you live? New York. New York. Oh, well, across the river from New York, but I, I didn't. Uh, so I I take classes at Columbia, but I I'm not going to be a matriculated student there. Oh, yeah, okay. it's well, for high, it's for high school students to take. So I I, I, I didn't apply. I, I I sorry. I guess I'm not a pl I'm not I'm not uh in a okay. Columbia. You might check class. Okay, you might check University of Chicago because I entered there after three years of high school. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, and uh, yeah, so I started college at age 16. Wow, and, okay. And uh, it was worth doing. Like, it was really, you know, I didn't miss much by skipping the last year of high school. <laughs> okay. Well, so, you don't know what you missed. I still do that. That was in the mid-1960s that I did that. So. Uh, uh, but they, they, uh, it, now that was, uh, but I came in as a full student. I didn't have a special status. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 Thank you. It took me right in as a full student. So, and it's a very, it, the University of Chicago, I, I, unless they've changed, it was, when I was there, they had a total of 600 undergraduate students and 3,000 graduate students. So you could wow. immediately get, Jo I, I had jobs right from the beginning in research environments. Wow. Okay. Thank I you. Mean, paying jobs. So, <laughs> so Akiva, are you interested in like more like the computational biology side of things or the pure biology sort of neurology kind of things? Yeah, I'm more interested in the computation side of things. Because I see you do a lot of uh, coding type stuff for open worm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well. So, I'm more interested. Yeah, so I'm more interested in, I guess, the th the theory behind the biology. Or yeah, me too. Okay, <laughs> okay I'll have to. Uh, I, I wrote a paper also many years ago, uh, uh, directed at high school students on uh, careers in theoretical biology. Oh, I'll, I'll send you that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah. Dick was doing some very early work in cellular automata. He showed us a paper. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I did one. 1966 was my first paper. Wow. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, it was on cellular automata. Yeah, we just we just finished a chapter uh, that had a lot to do with cellular automata too, in a book. So. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna send. Um, Here's. Okay, I'll send that to you. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Uh, I see. So, yeah, I, I understand your frustration. Uh, which school were you in? High school. Oh, it's uh, it, it, it's a, it was a, well, I'm no longer in it, but it um, I, I yeshiva. I'm Jewish. Um, so okay. yeshiva in Paramus, New Jersey. Yeah. They teach anything besides Torah? Yeah, they. I mean, they teach uh, they see the general studies and 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 Jewish studies. So the, the day is double as long, and there is double as much work. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was in the University of Chicago uh, laboratory school. They have their own elementary school and high school in, in the university. But oh wow. But that that couldn't keep me in either. I left that after three years. Wow. So 
But seriously, check Chicago because it was very good that way. Uh, it's a, as I said, it's a, the total student body is very small. At that time they were admitting, I guess, 150 students per year. It must also be then. It's probably very selective too, right? Yeah, I presume so, but yeah, uh, that, that's okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, I'll. Sounds like you got the brains to do it. Question of whether you can get in. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll look into that. Thank you so much. I really yeah, appreciate it. It was not a special program. I'm saying they just took me as an early entrant. I think that's what they called it. They didn't require the high school. Okay. I will look into that. Okay. I, I may have had to take some exams. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, whatever. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it, the uh, the only thing, how old are you now? 16. You're 16? Okay. Well, yeah, the only problem you face is uh, the girls are all older than you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that'll be a problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> that, that's the only one I had. Didn't do much dating at the time. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Uh, the uh, why are you particularly interested in neuroscience? Why neuroscience? Well, now I'm in, so in the past few weeks, as I've I've talked to some of the biologists at Rockefeller, and I've realized that I, I originally thought that neuroscience was so was so uh, amazing because you want, you're trying to understand computation in these complex systems when you have many interacting components and yep. there's emergent complexity and that just fascinated me. But now I'm seeing that it you see this in all of biology and in fact oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so okay. so now I'm, now I guess I'm more generally interested in in, in, in okay. these in these in these systems with many interacting component dynamical networks, so I am now, I'm not. I guess I'm not partic I'm not particular to neuroscience anymore. Okay, but that's well, that's slowly changing. I want to send you a, a paper uh, which I wrote recently with Rob Stone uh, on called cybernetic embryo, and uh, it's. It's the puzzle of how an embryo builds itself, which is kind of what the uh, Adivo worm project is about. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll send you that. It's uh, it's in press right now. Okay. Wow. Um, but it's uh, the thing that we're finding is standard approaches, uh, you know, emergent behavior. Uh, Physics approaches, reductionism, etc. These are not working in terms of solving these problems. Uh, so, the, this is a stab at trying to find a middle ground that's productive. Okay. And, you know, I was kind of involved in the I, well, I still have a little bit artificial life, um, and about like ten or so years ago, there was. Sort of a consensus that uh, oh it's 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 kind of plateaued because we don't have the right chemistry you know that it's not rich enough so it, it's hard to build computational models of something that's so yeah yeah so amazingly complex you know uh, but you're gonna have to read my book Tom Come on. okay <laughs> it's amazingly simple oh okay. <laughs> The problem is wrapping your brain around okay. the system. We're all a little alchemists. I, I, I'm not thing. a great believer in complexity theory. I you found the philosopher's stone. Well, I don't want philosopher's stone. I prefer <laughs> simplicity theory. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. I'm not. I'm not moving away from neuroscience as much as expanding my interest to everything else. Uh, yeah. The, the the problem with most neuroscience is very simple, and that is that it, de it usually deals with the adult organism. And so you miss how on earth the thing got constructed. 
uh, and then started functioning or functioned as it got constructed. And uh, we don't really, you know, I mean, if, for instance, if you take, uh, if you take vision, we, we now know that uh, if you take kittens, uh, that the, uh, the early visual experience involves a lot of cell death in the uh, visual cortex. Are you familiar with this? Yeah, I'm, I've heard about it, but not not having studied it in depth. And apoptosis, it, right? Uh, yeah. It, it, so it's clear there's some relationship between experience and uh, the construction of whatever it is, call it neural neural networks or whatever that, that leads to thinking. Okay. And uh, so my attitude has been that we have to go back to the embryo and see how. The, uh, how the brain gets built in the first place. And basically, we've been working at the levels so far of up to the, trying to span the gap from the single egg to the formation of the neural plate from which the brain then develops. Uh, and most neurophysiologists start at the adult level and sometimes reach a little bit back, but there's this huge gap between neural plate level and the functioning adult brain, uh, which has almost well, very little investigation. Yeah, there's, a, there's a bit, but not a, not a lot. So, it, and usually it's very different people who do the two, two different things. So uh, by hooking up with the Devo, with the uh, open worm project, we're hoping that we'll drag the neurophysiologists and the computational scientists who are working on open worm back a little bit to watch how the worm get built in the first place. And maybe there'll be some insights on how it functions as a result of understanding how it's put together. And, uh, and since an embryo has to function all the time anyway, there may be a development of the functioning that's also occurring. It's not like, it, it's not like you, an embryo develops into an adult brain and then it turns on. Right. You know, like like the you know, like data in Star Trek, <laughs> it can be turned on and off. <laughs> okay, it, so something else, something is going on there in the whole process of development. Uh, okay, and it will be very important to understanding what the adult's mental state is, or the ability to calculate, or whatever. Uh, uh, so we, now I can only be vague about this, but uh, it's it's just an impression I've had over the years of watching neurophysiologists. And, uh, and their struggles with adult organisms and their general, generally ignorance about how on earth the thing got built. Okay, okay. yeah, that sounds... Okay, very... so that's, that's kind of where the Devo Worm Project fits into the Open Worm Project. But to be honest, we've attracted very few of the Open Worm people to the development. The state. They're still mostly adult neurophysiology oriented. So, how many? How large is the Open Worm Project? I mean, the Devil Worm Project right well, now. You're, many, you're looking at it. <laughs> what are you looking at? <coughs> yeah. Yes.
Uh, in, yeah, in terms of the paper you just presented, the uh, one of the things Bradley uh, wants to look at, and I don't, Bradley, t correct me, but I don't think you've gotten into this yet. Uh, we're looking in the nematode basically at every single cell during development and what its daughter cells are and what their daughter cells are, et cetera. Uh, and we're, right now we're looking at very fundamental parameters such as position, position versus time, size of the cells, uh, and trying to make sense of these uh, over development. But we'd also like to tag them uh, with the uh, uh, gene expression that's occurring in each kind of cell. And so if we could start mining the literature for that information and tagging with, uh, with all these other parameters, you know, when does the cell, for, the cell first appears when it's a daughter cell of a mother cell, okay? So we got that. And then it goes on and divides, and it also changes kind to a new, new kind of cell. So if we could tag each cell with what we know about gene expression in each cell, we might start to see patterns in this and start to make some sense of it. And that might be better than what you, the kind of paper you presented, which is an a priori model of how it occurs. I mean, you know, one of the things that was obviously wrong with the paper, for example, is that all the equations are linear. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, we know gene expression is nonlinear. So it's, 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 it's sort of just smoothed over all of that stuff but nonlinearity might be more important than having linear expressions because often nonlinearities are what lead to triggering and to flipping and to changing of state, to bifurcations, things like that. Okay. Okay. So, so one, so what I'm saying is uh, if, uh, if you're really interested in gene expression and I don't know, uh, let me ask you, Bradley. How many what's how many cells does the nematode have when it gets its first nerve cell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so we'd have to get up to that level. Okay, that that would be a starting point to say, okay, how much has to go on before you get even one nerve cell? That's kind of strange because there's like a third of the organism is is neurons, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. One of the interesting, one of the questions now that I'm uh, that I just realized could be answered when you look at development is the is the roles of each neuron because you can. Um, you can look at what are the most what roles does he, do these neurons play when there are only a few neurons in the in the embryo? Because one one of the things that uh, has, is being done is people are trying to are probing every neuron in C. elegans. I know someone at, at in the Bargman lab at Rockefeller is doing this, but if you knew uh, when you have like a minimal network at some early stage in development. Mm -hmm. What what functions do these neurons play? What roles do these neurons play? Right, and they're not doing that, right? No. Yeah, so like like Akiva was saying, like uh, at a very young stage, uh, perhaps uh, the neural structures are there for uh, locomotion, you know, but not not some other things yet, you know. So like it like its life stages as it, as they evolve and they get more complex, its neural system would uh, come into play to 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 enable that. <coughs>
Yeah. Well, I better be uh, heading back to uh, things here. So, your day job. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know. So I really appreciate the the talk. It was great uh, to meet you, Akiva. You too. Okay. Well, we have one meeting tonight. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's it's morning for him. He's talking from <laughs> so. Oh, uh, would you be able to do that? Just pay. Thank uh, you so much. Paste it in the chat. Put the, put the link in the chat, Bradley. Um, I will. I need to catch the train home, so I will have to. Oh, that's okay. That's Thank you. Okay. So, okay. what's your Skype name? ACL scientist. ACL scientist. What does ACL stand for? My my initials: Kiva Chaim Lipschitz. Oh oh oh. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Middle initial. Okay. Okay, I'm reading uh, right now the uh, biography of Chaim Weitzman. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, have a good trip, and uh, it was Thank great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much for uh, welcoming me into the group. It's sure. very, very exciting. No, okay. Uh, you may regret it. We'll put you to work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good night. Have a good trip. Bye. Yeah. Okay.